Hey guys, uh, so here I am, finally back with another tutorial. I'm gonna really try this year to get better at doing these. So in my classes, I get a lot of questions from uh, beginners especially, asking about uh, workouts that they can do at home or just when they're not in aerial class um, to help them build aerial muscles. Like, should I be doing push-ups or crunches? And yes, you can do those things, um, but it's a little bit different. Building muscles on the ground is gonna target your strength in different ways than actually building it in the air. So actually the best thing to do is just keep going to class. There you'll be able to get the proper instruction that you need on building the correct muscles and doing it with proper form and technique. Now that I'm a full-time teacher, I teach five days a week. Um, I train in between my classes in during my free time when I'm at the studio, but when I wasn't teaching full-time, I had to find a way to work on my aerial strength outside of um, studio time. So I'm gonna show you a couple of exercises that you work on park equipment. So ideally, if you have a park that you can go to that has gymnastics equipment, that is the best um, equipment to work on your aerial conditioning. But you can also do some of this stuff on, most parks now have workout equipment if not at least playground equipment. That's what I used to do back in the day as I would do some of this stuff on the playground and um, it was quite entertaining to the children. I don't recommend doing a lot of this on a pull-up bar in your house because pull-up bars aren't really made to support your weight when inverting. Um, they actually have disclaimers on them that tell you not to invert on them and that's because you don't really know the structure of your door frame and door frames aren't meant to support human weight. So if you were to go upside down and God forbid it should break, you could end up seriously injuring yourself. So pull-up bars are really meant for pull-ups, not inversions. And now let's go to the park. Start with some simple joint warm-ups like shoulder rolls, arm circles, elbow circles, head rolls, windmill your arms, just move things around. It's always a good idea to get your joints moving and lubricated before you start any kind of intense workout. First exercise is reverse incline pull-ups. This one is performed underneath some low parallel bars. Grip the bars and pull up as high as you can. Switch your grip around, palms to face you, and repeat. Next, let's do some tricep dips. Sit on top of the bars, and then wrap your knees around the other side, and grip the side close to you. And then dip your hips down and lift back up. Next, we'll move to the rings and do some shoulder shrugs. Now, my angle was slightly off, so it's kind of hard to see, but I actually have to stand on a step stool to even reach the rings at my park because they're so high. Um, but you do want to have your feet completely off the ground. If when you lift up, your feet are still on the floor, you can always bend your knees. So you want to think about elongating your neck and bringing your shoulders away from your ears rather than hunching. Try to keep your elbows straight and gently lift your chest using your lats. Dead hang knee tucks and leg lifts. Don't let the name scare you, it's just straight arms. Keep your shoulders engaged and down your back, and then tuck your knees up into your chest as high as you can, as you slightly curl the tailbone under. I like to think of it as trying to kiss your knees. Then do the same motion with straight legs. Keep your knees locked out and lift your feet as high as you can. I always tell my students in this one that I'd rather see straight knees than height. You can do these two in succession or you can alternate. Pull-ups. I find it helps to slightly lean back as I pull into it. Don't get discouraged if these are hard at first. When I first started practicing aerial arts, I literally couldn't do a pull-up to save my life. They'll get easier. Chin-ups. 
You can perform these on the ring or on a bar with an over or underhand grip. I find doing underhand is a little more similar to the way you'll be gripping aerial fabric. A more advanced version of the knee tucks and leg lifts exercise would be to do it from a pull up. Make sure your neck is long, your shoulders down, and hold your pull up as high as possible. If you can squeeze your hands into your shoulders, that's going to be the most stable position. Pike pull ups. Get yourself into a tuck in version and then straighten your legs parallel to the ground. Try to keep your knees into your chest as you bend your elbows to pull up. Try not to lift your butt or your legs. Egg rolls. Tuck your knees into your chest as you pull up. Try to keep your knees as high into your chest as possible while dipping back with straight arms. Bend your elbows to come back up and keep your knees high and then try to go again. Dead hang pike through to skin the cat. With straight arms and straight knees, pike your feet up high toward your face and then over your head. Continue with toes toward the ground and sink your hips only as low as you can while still being able to lift back up. The skin the cat motion has to do with lifting your hips through your arms down toward the ground and then back up. You can do this part without the dead hang pike or with bent knees, if that's easier. I don't know why they call these skin the cat. I've never liked that name. <coughs> straddle ups. As you lift up, straddle your legs over your arms. When you come back upright, bring your feet together and then do it again. Straight knees is always going to be harder. So if you need to, you can bend your knees into it and développe up. You can do these with an overhand or an underhand grip, but like I said before, I like underhand because it's a little more similar to the grip you'll be doing on aerial fabric. Straddle TikToks and meat hooks. I'm gonna show you the entire progression of strength building for this skill. This eventually leads into conditioning for your meat hooks. Come into your straddle up and then begin lifting one foot to tap on your rope or chain or fabric, whatever you're conditioning on, as you leave the free leg in your straddle. Try to keep your hips lifted into your arms as you do this. When tapping your toes gets easier, try to lift your foot all the way back behind your apparatus, and then eventually you'll want to tap your foot to your other foot, coming into your meat hook. First condition your meat hook by finding your straddle in between sides. And then once you feel like you're ready to progress, you can windshield wiper your legs, bending your elbows and keeping your feet together. The most advanced version of this conditioning exercise will be to try to pivot around your feet, dropping your hips, keeping your legs straight, and just pivoting from side to side. You can also work on letting go with one hand if you choose. Straight arm straddles. When you feel ready to move into the more advanced exercises, this is a good one to start with. Try to keep both your knees and your elbows straight as you lift into a straddle. Try to lift and not jump. And then descend as slowly as possible leading with your hips. If you trust your grip strength and you feel like you want to get even more advanced, you can try these one arm at a time. Give yourself a spot to start by gripping your wrist with your free hand. Straddle through beats. You can get a lot more reps in if you add in a little bit of a swing. And kick back slightly with your feet. Keep your knees straight and come into a straddle with one leg through your arms. Repeat on the other side. Pullovers. You will know this struggle, especially if you're working on building strength for some type of bar apparatus like a trapeze or a lira. Even if you don't make it all the way over into your hips, just lift your legs as high as you can with the intention of going over, and eventually you will. It's a lot harder to do a pullover on a stationary bar than on some sort of aerial apparatus that'll move with you. So if you work on these on parallel bars or on pull-up bars, I guarantee you you will build that strength and be able to do it on your aerial apparatus in no time. 
I like to build my back core while I'm here by hooking my ankles around the other side of the bar and then doing some like backward crunches. I talked about these in my back strengthening video, but you can see it a lot more clearly here. Stretch feels good after this one. And that's everything I have for you guys today. Good luck in your conditioning. Happy strength building. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like it and subscribe for even more helpful fitness and flexibility tips. Is there anything you're working on that you could use some help with? Let me know in the comments what video you'd like to see next.